Not a lot in here. I think you're safe for business. No, that's right. I mean, I think if you look at this, it, it, it wasn't what business was ex was expecting, which I think was a restraint budget. Now, you can argue whether it's good or bad, but I think the reality is um, it, it wasn't that. It was very much a Labour Party political budget in election year, and I'm not necessarily knocking that, but I think that's what we got. Um, Janae, there was a lot on infrastructure. Many people have said good news. Yes, exactly. The, the expansion of the capital allowance was what really surprised me and surprised a lot of economists. Um, Grant Robertson is allocating a lot more money towards infrastructure, housing, transport, much more than he signalled back in December. And that means that we, we, we need to issue a lot more debt than expected. The thing with this is we all agree we need infrastructure, but who's going to build it? How are we going to get the money out the door? Those are the questions on, on my mind. I think also a question around those 500 new Nurses, I think people have too. It's great to have the money for nurses, but where are they going to come from? Matt, um, in terms of Māori, how do you think this budget served... Them. Yeah, a little bit nervous when we first looked at the numbers, but actually it's, it's okay. Tamatatini's a huge win. They'll be really happy with that 34 mil extra. Uh, there was a nice little chunk in the in whānau order for, for uh, 650 babies through their first thousand days. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think they'll be okay. It, it certainly holds the line there. Well, the, the, what did you think about the politics of this, Simon? Because it is quite difficult to attack... Uh, extending ECE for two-year-olds, isn't it? I think watching Grant Robertson just now is very instructive. Look, he's a supreme diplomat. That's where he's come from. He's very good at that. I think what is also true, though, is he is subtly, fundamentally saying, when I spend it, it's not inflationary. It doesn't have an effect on interest rates. But look, when those dirty, rotten opposition people <laughs> spend it and tax cuts, it is. The truth is they both are. Centre-right likes tax relief. Um, the the centre-left likes um, fiscal spending. And so, um, you know, pick your point. Poison, but I think this was a big budget. I think a lot of households will be saying, um, you know, what does this mean for us in terms of inflation and interest rate? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get, a, I think, a peek into that uh, next week from the Reserve Bank Governor. Yeah, absolutely. And that tension between the Reserve Bank Governor uh, and the Finance Minister is sort of on display this week, isn't it? You know, he was saying uh, he doesn't think that Grant Robertson was saying, I don't think two more hikes is necessary. But mm. what do you think Adrian Orr is going to say? Well, I look forward to the press conference on Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll, you know, we'll see some sort of colour for commentary. The bank economists are predicting that the OCR will need to rise more or remain higher for longer than would otherwise have been the case. Mm. Importantly, the other thing to look at here is immigration. Mm. So a lot of their forecasts are actually on the back of immigration being stronger than expected, in addition to this budget being more expansionary than expected. I think immigration is where the biggest question mark hangs over in terms of the economy because it affects you know, demand, it affects labour, so many different components, and there's lots of uncertainty around that. Yeah, and we've just got those really big numbers of people coming in. Yeah. The 150,000 people that are going to become unemployed in the yeah. next year according to those Treasury figures. That is, uh, they, that is going to be an extraordinarily tough time for them and these are working people. It's, it's devastating yeah. to families, isn't it? Yeah, and quite possibly we'll come straight out of a cost of living crisis into an employment crisis. Um, 5.3 is not a huge employment rate. Uh, it'll depend a lot on what happens overseas. Also for Māori, quite often that employment, un employment rate sits at about twice what the headline figure is, so we could be looking at 10% unemployment to run Māori if we get up to 5% overall which would be a real concern. Um, yeah, tough. Also, on that, um, in terms of unemployment, if the Reserve Bank has to keep interest rates higher for longer, that is, you know, causes less economic expansion, more unemployment. But on the other hand, all of this money in the pipeline for capital expenditure, roads, all that, that creates jobs. So in many ways, that's kind of counter-cyclic, right? Economic downturn expected, more expenditure sort of prop props things up a bit. Yeah, what do you think, Simon? Look, on the infrastructure... Um I hear what Janae's saying. I think at a level she's right. But what I would question, I think we have to dig into, uh, smarter people maybe than, than me, is um, we've got the rebuild money. That's great. Yep, there's a lot of talk about other things. Um, how much is there actually for capital improvement? Uh, that, that is, is there money there to fund an Auckland Light Rail or a Wairamata Harbour Crossing? Personally, I have my doubt on the numbers. Um, former Transport Minister, uh, that that necessarily is. So, yep, rebuild. Um, yep, resilience, climate change, these things actual genuine productivity enhancing improvement, I'm not so sure. Simon, I want to um, just ask you another question on something specific, because you, yep. you are a former MP and a former uh, national leader. We've seen $14 million um, going towards security yep. for MPs. You know, we're, we're in a very different yeah. climate now, five months out from the election, yeah. aren't we? Broadly speaking, I would be supportive of that. I mean, I think 
what's amazing about New Zealand in comparison really with anywhere, it's a very open democracy. You can get to members of parliament, and that's a good thing. Um, I was quite opposed to some of what Trevor Mallard as speaker was trying to do, which was really create fortresses about, around MPs' offices and the like. I think what's also true, and some of my former colleagues may not like this, but if you think about it, your average MP isn't known to the public, not necessarily even their constituents uh, sometimes. But I think what is also true is for high-profile MPs, uh, it has become more and more, dare I say it, dangerous. Uh, I certainly felt that uh, as leader of the opposition. You don't always feel that you get the support you require from the police and the like. So, look, broadly speaking, I think this is um, is the right thing to do. Fine line. We don't want to be a fortress, but we do need to protect our members of parliament. And just final thoughts on the budget, Janae. Anything that was m missing to you? What was missing? I mean, you listen to different interest groups and they all make really strong cases. I think uh, people who are on the breadline really struggling with the cost of living crisis will say, why, why didn't we get more money? Why, why are some of these schemes targeted at middle New Zealand? I think this was a political budget targeting women, young families, people doing it tough with mortgage rates, but there are people worse off who will feel like they missed out. Yes, absolutely, and I think that, that group will be important for the uh, government to, you know, to talk to in terms of their policy closer to the election, won't it, Matt? Yeah, um, I mean, there's lots of quality of life improvements that should have happened, they were the right thing, like the care we save for people on parental leave. Mm. Great thing to do, should have happened a long time ago. Mm. Um, and they're probably going to be appealing to that middle vote. Uh, 